Shalom. Welcome to Yahweh's Torah for Hebrew. My name is the boy Yah Sifarot by Yahweh. Um, I hope you all have been enjoying part one and part two to anatomy versus Yahweh's spirituality, woman figures, and Yahweh's descriptions. Um, we have went over a substantial amount of woman figures and Yahweh's Torah. Um, for the sole purpose to attempt to put balance in scriptures, um, when scriptures such as Shaul's letters were and are being um, misinterpreted, unfortunately. So um, we went over a few brief objectives in part one and part two, and we elaborated on Huda, uh, Yahuda, Judah, Judah, Queen Esther, uh, her, Hebrew, her Hebraic name is Hadassah, Jael, which is really Yael, Ruth, Miriam, the sister of Moshe, Rahab, we spoke, we even spoke about the midwives in Exodus, Shemot chapter 1. And tonight, we're going to leave off with probably the most well-known, one of the most well-known prophetess in scriptures, and that is Deborah. Um, I joked in one of my part, in one of the parts, I'm not being biased because of my name, why I left her out, um, but I am reading something that was gifted to me about the boy. Um, and this is quite lengthy, so I'm glad that I'm doing this. I wanted to make this a separate video because the last two women will be quite lengthy dis um, discussing their biography. So let's get into it. Deborah or Deborah? Deborah or Deborah, the prophetess and judge of Israel by Arthur Green, the voice of Mount Carmel. How long will you, how long halt you between two opinions? First Kings chapter 18, verse 21. This was published in September 2013. Deborah, Deborah, the prophetess and judge of Israel. It was during the time of the judges that the Israelites had no earthly form of government, which ruled over the people because Yahweh did not desire that for his people. Yahweh knew that the earthly governments ruling over people was a punishment to those who could not follow his order. Therefore, whenever the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh, he would deliver them into the hands of their enemy to serve them, and their enemy would become a minister, a teacher, some sort of spiritual leadership person over them. Judges chapter 2, verse 16 through 19 states, Nevertheless, Yahweh raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they were not hearken unto the judges, but they went a horn at the other Elohim, which is God's, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the law, the mitzvot, the commandments of Yahweh, but they did not do so. When Father Yahweh raised them up judges, then Yahweh was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of that judge. For it repented Yahweh because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge died that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers and following other gods to serve them and to bow unto them. They cease not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. Um, 
just reading that put a smile on my face because, you know, Father Yahweh and his firstborn, Israel, it just is it's, it's a love story. You know, you can read the book of Hosea, Hosea and compare how Hosea had to marry an unfaithful, unrighteous woman. And um, Israel, the people, nation, and land of Israel is considered the bride. And we have been spiritually unfaithful to Yahweh since, you know, way back. But again, that put a smile to my face because even through our unrighteousness, our ancestors' unrighteousness, Father Yahweh came to save the day. It's like love surpasses all. Yeah, Father Yahweh is an almighty one of judgment, but he's an almighty one of love first. So when we may have a tendency to look at the uh, people who are not following the ways of Yahweh, seeing that they are being blessed, but Father Yahweh has patience with every man, for he says in his word that it is not his desire for one man to perish. So he has patience and mercy first. And the physical judgments that we see is Father Yahweh getting impatient. Not necessarily impatient, but uh, just righteously casting judgment on individuals who had the chance to repent. Yahweh reveals himself to people one way or the other. The origin of De Deborah or Deborah. In the book of Judges, chapter 4 and 5, we learn of a female that was chosen by Yahweh to lead the people of Israel to victory over the Canaanites. Her name was Deborah or Deborah, and she proclaimed that she arose a mother in Israel, Judges 5 and 7. Um, interestingly enough, one of, if you were to search, I like to believe if you were to search um, mother in Hebrew, it would be M. Um, that is what mother means in Hebrew, M. And I like to believe that one of the insights for that mentions Deborah. Deborah. Um, that's just a fun fact. We're going to, if you like, you can turn with me to Judges chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse 1. The children of Israel continued to do what was evil in the eyes of Father Yahweh. Once Ehud died, or Ehud. Yahweh delivered them into the hand of Jabin, or Yabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The general of his army was Caesarea, who dwelt in Hirosheth of the other nations verse 3 the children of israel cried out to yahweh for caesarea i had 900 iron chariots and he oppressed the children of israel forcefully for 20 years the boy was a prophetess So quickly, I like to read the commentary for that. The Bora was a prophetess. The people again lapsed into sinful conduct and were punished by Canaan in fulfillment of the prophecy in Judges chapter 2, verse 3. The Yahweh will cause the Canaanites to be a source of pain and irritation. Let's keep reading verse 4. The Bora was a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth. 
commentary states that the boy was the first judge to be described as a prophet and as a decider of questions of law for the nation. For the nation. Humbly speaking, it doesn't. One of the many, one of the many scriptures that uh, gets misinterpreted um, when Shaul mentions that woman, um, the elder woman, should teach uh, the ch the children and, and and the woman how to be modest. Absolutely, absolutely. If you read a few scriptures before that, if you want to be that technical. And I don't really want to use the word petty, but if you want to be that technical, um, I like to believe this is Titus. I like to believe in the book of Titus. Um, it's either Titus or Corinthians, but I like to say it's Titus. And it speaks on the men first, the, uh, the, uh, the elders deacons or i forgot what spiritual um leadership title he was speaking to and it spoke of those leaders teaching the men i say that because it's obvious you know, it, it, it 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 should be obvious that men taught both men and women Moshe, Abraham, and so forth, etc. Um, Yahweh ordained women to to have the victory and to help pave the way for children of Israel. That's Yahweh's business. So, for anyone to get offended for women of Torah women to teach dead and dying souls the truth about Yahweh you, you may as well just rip out every chapter every section that mentions the prophets or mentions a woman that does something for Yahweh Shaul once again more than likely was speaking to a specific people, a specific timeline, unlearned women, other nations, other religions. I'll just say religious women and men he was talking to. These letters were going to other nations. The Israelite people already knew the deal. <laughs> Those who were faithfully within the faith system of Israel, because let's not get it twisted, Yahshua had to talk to the religious Pharisees and Sadducees and those who were putting their man made religious doctrines and trying to put it with Yahweh's pure set apart scriptures. This does include Christianity. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through 18. In the book of Acts, when Christian Christianity was mentioned, this was Gentiles adding that word in there. Christianity comes. Matter of fact, look, check out the link in the description box um, about pagan, pagan words and so forth. Okay, so the boy was the first judge to be described as a prophet and a and as a decider of questions of law for the nation. Her husband named Lapidoth means torches. The phrase Eshet Lapidoth then indicates that Deborah or Deborah was either a woman who made wicks for the tabernacle menorah or and or a fiery energetic woman. Scholarship Torah commentators also say that alternatively, Lapidoth torches was another name for Barak, which is who will be mentioned in verse 6. A name that means flesh. I thought that was interesting. 
an interesting insight. So verse 4, chapter 4. Deborah was a prophetess, the wife of Lap uh, Lap Lapidoth. She judged Yisrael at that time. She would sit under the date palm of Deborah between Ramah and Beth Yahweh on Mount Ephraim. And the children of Yisrael will go up to her for judgment. Um... I mentioned this to a good friend of mine, a, a, a brother in spirit. Um, that, you know, I personally, I don't know how she became a judge. But we do, we, we can see the common ground and the order and the structure of her being married and her keeping her boundaries and her modesty. And she judged within her premises. So you may not have prophets and prophetesses in 2000, technically now, in the secular year 2023 now, you won't see us maybe prophesying under the tree, but you will see us prophesying on YouTube. You will see us prophesying on other social media platforms and so forth. She was doing it in modesty and order. It's a difference with, um, what is the word I want to go for? Assertiveness. Righteous assertiveness. Um, one of the characteristic attributes and traits of Yahweh, a feminine character attribute and trait of Yahweh, hallelujah, is um, discernment, strength, discipline. Righteous judgment. Why else was her name Deborah and she was a judge? Verse 6. She went and summoned Barak, son of Abinom of Kedesh Naphtali, and said to him, Behold, Yahweh, the eternal one of Israel, has commanded. Go and convince the people to go toward Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men from the children of Naphtali and from the children of Zebulon. I will draw toward you to Kishon Brook, Caesarea, the general of Jabin's or J Jabon or Yabon Yabin's army with his chariot and his multitude, and I shall deliver him unto your hand. Barak said unto her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you do not go with me, I will not go. She said, Indeed, I will go with you. But the path on which you have chosen to go will not be for your esteem, for your cargo. Scratch out glory. Glory is a pagan deity. Gloria. Hasatan offered. Yahshua, the Mashiach, the Israel, and Savior of the world. Gloria, the pagan deity, worldly riches and pleasures. The Borah didn't say that out of her mouth. She said to Barak, but the path on which you have chosen to go will not be for your esteem, for your honor, for your kavod in Hebrew, K-A-V-O-D. For Yahweh will have delivered Caesarea into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. We'll stop right there for now. So Deborah was the fourth in line of judges that ruled Israel, of which Yahweh himself had chosen to lead the children of Israel. Prior to this time in history, although women had played an important part, men dominated the affairs of the world. Again, disclaimer, this is not about feminism. We are speaking about Yahweh's scriptures. So if, you, if you have a concern about what I'm saying, take it up with Yahweh. Humbly speaking. Hi.
Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Yahweh raised up, however, a woman in Israel to be a judge and to deliver his people from their oppressor. Even the Israelites suffered 20 years of punishment before they were compelled to go to Deborah and recognize her as their judge. Praise Yah. Praise Yah for patience and discipline and strength. Yahweh made us in his image and likeness. I'll go over that in the marriage video. And Deborah was a woman of Yahweh, so she understood the principles and the characteristics, attributes, and traits of Yahweh. She followed them. 20 years, they were being stiff-necked and stubborn. Nevertheless, she even had to remind Barak of the commandment Yahweh given him and questioned him about it. As we read in Judges 4, 6, Has not Yahweh commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tamar, and take with thee ten thousand men, of the children of Nephetili, and of the children of Zebulon? It was, the, it was Barak's stubbornness that kept him in bondage, as long as he failed to recognize her Yahweh-given position. The scriptures list attributes concerning Deborah, which are as follows. A prophet, a wife, a judge, and dwelt under a palm tree. Hallelujah. Let's speak on a few of our attributes. Deborah, Deborah, the prophetess. Deborah was a prophet in Israel, yet prior to her emergence on the scene, the scriptures tell us nothing about her background. However, it was not until she was asked to accompany the army of Barak. As we went, as she uttered, I will surely go with thee. Notwithstanding the journey that thou art taken shall not be from thine honor. For Yahweh shall sell Cecilia into the hand of a woman. We just read that scripture. Barak, who had previously refused to follow the mitzvah teaching instruction guideline boundaries of Yahweh. This is what the Latin law means in regards to Yahweh's Hebrew scriptures. <laughs> It's called Mitzvot, M-I-T-V-O-T, M-I-T-Z-V-O-T, hallelujah. Barak, who had previously refused to follow the Torah Mitzvot of Yahweh, was given a second chance to obey Father Yahweh. Yet, because of his uncertainty concerning this woman, again, verse 8 states, if thou will go with me, then I will go. But if you do not go with me, then I will not go. Barak had a hard time believing that Yahweh, that this commandment of Yahweh would come from the mouth of a woman. And to test her faith, he asked her to accompany him into battle. So pretty much he was saying, put your money where your mouth is. I'm not endorsing gambling, but that's... I'm, I'm trying to generalize it to different audiences. Put your money where your mouth is. And you talking big stuff now. <laughs> Who are you, woman, telling me about Yahweh? You know, we, we have men like that in the faith system of Israel. Who are you, woman, to tell me about the scriptures? And you supposed to be knitting and just... You know, just being docile. Women of women of Yahweh, before they even get married, should already be educated in the Torah of Yahweh. I'm not saying that you should already know Yahweh's scriptures with like the back of your hand, because I wholeheartedly believe the oldest person in this world should still be learning scriptures. Too many braggers say they they already read Yahweh's scriptures. The 
don't be that person where y'all y'all shoot and said the pause. I need work with a nigga with you. I need you not. Don't be that person. But 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 did not do this. Did not do that. Did not read the scriptures. Yeah, she was funny. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm a she uh he didn't play. Nevertheless, then Barak had to prove her faith and she accompanied Barak into battle. No other judge of Israel will ever be challenged in this manner, yet because she was a woman, she had to prove herself to be Yahweh's judge. Yahweh wanted the children of Israel to know that it does not matter to Yahweh, who is not a man, not a woman. Yahweh is. Yahweh shall be what he shall be. Higher, a share higher. He has masculine and feminine attributes. We'll go over that in, in, in another video, Yahweh willing. Yahweh wanted the children of Israel that it does not matter. To him, whether they enter battle by a man or a woman, he could give them the victory either way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahweh. Yet because the man, Barak's hesitation, the honor that he could have gained by listening to the female prophet the first time was taken from him and given into the hand of a woman. As we read in chapter 4, verse 9, Deborah prophesied and said, The journey that thou shalt takest shall not be for thine honor, for Yahweh shall sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. This prophecy was uttered to test Barak's faith, who did not want to believe that Yahweh could use a woman to lead men into battle. Deborah was clearly telling Barak, that Caesarea himself will fall by the hand of a woman and not by the hand of any man. As we went over, I like to believe in part two, we talked about Yahudith, Judith. Yahudith is found in the hidden books, in a, uh, which is come, also known as apocryphal uh, books. She prayed to Yahweh about Jael, Yael. The same mission, and she had a very similar mission as Yael, Yael did in the book of Judges 4. Yehuda is, it is not 100% um, sure where she fits in, but it is said that the book of Yehuda was during the time of the Maccabean revolt. The book of Maccabees is also a hidden book, which is essential to the account. The minor Moed, the minor appointed time of, Han of Hanukkah. And this is not found in Yahweh's Torah. But, however, righteous men appointed this time, and Yahweh allowed that scripture to be read to those who had ears to hear and eyes to see. They proclaim Hanukkah to be celebrated in the 25th day of Kislev from a Hebraic calendar standpoint. Amen and amen. So, um, Barak did not know how this prophecy would come true because Deborah was no warrior, nor was she part of the military. And we know how, because in verse 14 in Judges, it says, Even on a day of battle, only Barak went down from Mount Tabor, and the 10,000 men after him. The, uh, Deborah was not among them, but acted as a general who led troops into battle. Um... If you check out my small talk video, that's like a 15 minute video in regards to one of Yahweh's myths for his laws, in regards to how um, during times of war, if men were afraid of going into battle, don't go, don't mess up the chances of the other men who are 
riled it up in Yahweh's spirit to fight, you know. And here you are shaking in your boots. Um, high priest, the priests and generals before the wars talked to the children of Israel. They even sung hymns and praises to Yahweh because singing and praises was and is a spiritual weapon of Father Yahweh. But again, you can check that video out. It's 15 minutes if you're interested. So Judges 4, 15, and 16 says, um, I'll read it. This one. Yahweh panicked Caesarea and all the chariots and the entire camp by the edge of the sword before Barak. Caesarea dismounted from his chariot and fled on his feet. Verse 16, Barak chased after the chariots and after the camp until Har Harosheth of the other nations, Gentiles, the Goyim. And the entire camp of Caesarea fell by the edge of the sword. Not even one was left. We. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 17. Caesarea fled on his feet to the tent of Yael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, for there was shalom, there was peace between Jabin, 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 king of Hazor, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. Yael went out towards Caesarea and said to him, Turn aside, my master, turn aside to me, do not fear. So he turned aside to her to the tent and she covered him with a blanket. Again, verse two, part two, we went over Yahudit. A brief synopsis of Yahudit and her mission was very similar to as we just read in Yale, as we're reading. So Caesarea thus far thought that he found peace, that he found a sanctuary in the tent of Yael. Yet, as we keep reading, verse 19, he said to her, Give me now a bit of water to drink because I am thirsty. She opened a skin of milk, gave him to drink, and covered him. He said to her, Stand at the entrance of the tent, and it shall be. That if any man shall will come and ask you and say, is anyone here? You shall say no. Verse 21, Yael, the wife of Heber, took a tent peg, placed a hammer in her hand, came to him stiffly, and drove the peg into his temple, and then went threw into the ground while he was sleeping deeply and exhausted. He died. Behold, Barak was pursuing Caesarea, and Yael went out toward him and told him, Come and I will show you the man whom you seek. He came to her, hallelujah, and behold, Caesarea was fallen dead with the peg in his temple. So it was here that Barak finally realized that Yahweh was using Deborah to lead the children of Israel. And if we were to read Judges um, chapter 5, we'll just read verse 1. It says that Deborah sang as well as Barak, son of Abinom, on that day. Let's speak. Let's elaborate on another attribute of Deborah. Deborah the wife. Deborah or Deborah, she was married. She was a married woman. For Judges 4 and 4 says that she was the wife of Lapidoth. Again, as we went over momentarily ago, the name Lapidoth in Hebrew means torches. 
and if you don't know already a torch my definition is a fire source or a portable light of fire however his name meant torches not a singular torch therefore the lesson to learn from his name should be the most illuminating experience to all those who seek to understand his relationship to his wife this is one of the many insights of his name traditionally men have always been the predominant factor outside the home yet his wife was the judge of israel and his wife was given rulership over him as israel judge alone okay alone This is a message to all men and women that when Yahweh is the sole government of the people, as he was during the time of the judges, he views women and men as equals. Again, as stated before in the book of Bereshit, Genesis, Father Yahweh gave dominionship not just to Adam the man, but he gave to both man and woman dominionship. But look. It is obviously and definitely wholeheartedly order and structure in men and women. Lapidot, he brightly illuminates the path of this understanding and recognizes his wife's position. He did nothing he did nothing to interfere with the work of Yahweh in her life. Devarah could not have had a better husband who did not hinder her calling nor try to demean her to a lesser status by keeping only the home, but allowed her to do the work of Yahweh from the home. Deborah, in making her daily judgments, she did not have to consult her husband prior to making a decision, but strictly relied upon Yahweh for the correct answers. She even went with Barak to accompany him into battle. This was certainly a new day in Israel because women who had been mostly perceived as child bearers was now being viewed as a figure who could operate outside the home. What is also important to note is that Yahweh chose a married woman to send a bigger message. He did not choose a single woman who did not have to answer to anyone at home, but rather a married woman to show that a woman could be in a relationship but yet be equal to a man. This is a message that will be perfected on the new earth when Yahweh restores a woman, which is a analogous to the children of Israel being in the promised land. Amen. Hallelujah. In the earth, the husband and wife relationships will not exist and men will no longer rule over women, even while being in a relationship, as in the case of husbands and wives. Luke 20, verse 36 says, excuse me, I'm going ahead of myself. There will be no caste system in the heavens because we are the children of Yahweh. Luke 20, 36. Deborah is the only married prophetess mentioned in the scriptures, in the scriptures that was also a judge of Israel. She was handpicked by Yahweh to lead his people to victory. Again, as stated in Yoel chapter 3, verse 1 and Acts 2 17, Yahweh used both men and women to prophesy. Do things in order and decency and modesty. Both men and women. Both men and women had to be modest and gentle. Righteous indignation had to be shown when when enough was enough i like to say matthew 12 when yashua um pretty much had to set it off and set the tone like don't play with my father's temple y'all making this this temple of the den of wolves like this look like a whole hood y'all making this a street Hood fest, like, stop playing with my father's temple. Again, Yahweh is an almighty one of love and mercy first, but he is also an almighty one of judgment. It's not to take away what single men and what single women can do for Father Yahweh. Um, 
and I obviously not as a person, not obviously, but I do speak for myself. Um, the things that I do, this is not to toot my own, uh, own horn, please. This is all, you know, if I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in the things of Father Yahweh. The things that I, that I am led to do, you know, whether it's a friendly conversation, whether it's just showing modesty, you know, just being in the image, the characteristics, the attributes and traits of Yahweh, whether it's following Yahweh's Torah mitzvah. You know, that's a teacher right there. Showing your good works, letting, your act, letting Yahweh's good actions show through you. A prophet is simply, in, in simple terms, is a is a is a spokesperson for Yahweh. Let's talk about another attribute of Deborah, Deborah, a judge. It is only in the story of Deborah that we learn that Yahweh chose a woman to lead his people to victory over their enemies. And Deborah proclaimed that once again she arose a mother in Israel. Judges five and seven. The word Deborah in Hebrew means a honeybee. And like a queen bee who is mother of most of the bees in a hive, she became mother of most, if not all, the children of Israel. When Yahweh used her to deliver them from the hand of their enemy. Romans 2 and 11 speaks of Yahweh not being a respectful person. For there is no respect of persons with Yahweh the eternal one. Amen. The Deborah dwelt under the palm tree. The scriptures make it very plain that Yahweh, that Deborah, excuse me, dwelt under a palm tree that was located in Mount Ephraim. If the children of Israel had concerns, they had to go to Deborah dwelling place home to get answers. It is important here to mention that Barak was not among the people who came to her for judgment as she sent and called Barak which is found in Judges 4 and 6. Barak was hesitating on orders previously given by the prophet, not knowing that the victory was already in his hand. A palm tree is a symbol of victory, and this is where Deborah dwelt. My teacher, Blessed Memories, you know, taught his students if possible, have a room dedicated to Yahweh. You know, it's it just about him. Just make that that room about him. You know, in the Renewed Covenant, you'll read prayer clauses. You go in prayer clauses. Um, that's another scripture that can be take, taken very literal. The prayer closet is Yahweh's, uh, just covering your head. Put in a, a talit gado on you may if you are familiar with my Shabbat teachings when I pray I wear a talit gado over my head more so um, than a a feminine scar I wear a talit gado. This is your that's your prayer closet. Again, part one is different levels of interpretation of scriptures. We spoke about that probably the first few minutes in that in that part, part one. Barak did not recognize that her dwelling place was a symbol of Yahweh's power because he was too busy looking at a woman judge. Again, her dwelling place was between trees. Other people's dwelling places are on social media platforms at their job. In their neighborhoods. But you have too many people, unfortunately, who are looking at the anatomy of a person doing Yahweh's work. You should be happy that somebody's doing Yahweh's work. Go judge somebody that's not doing Yahweh's work. Humbly. Because it's a way of judging people, too. You don't want to come off condescending. 
Yahweh has given us the victory in many situations and we fail to capitalize on it because it does not come to us in a form or way that we readily accept. Do not underestimate Yahweh and what he can do, though whomever he chooses. But instead, if given another opportunity like Barak, 1 Yachanan, 1 John 4 and 1 says, Try the spirits, whether they are of Yahweh, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. I'm just thinking about the book of Jeremiah and the, the major reason why Yahweh always called out false prophets is because they sh had people straying away from the name of Yahweh. And y'all say that it doesn't matter what you call him. Because Yahweh's name is mentioned over 7,000 times. You write a book and you... And you write a keyword 7,000 times and tell me you wouldn't be mad if somebody changed that. Barak tried the spirit and found Deborah to be a true prophet of Yahweh. And again in chapter 5, you, we may read that he sung with Deborah, his judge, the song of Netzach, victory. Now even though the Most High Yahweh will do nothing outside what the scriptures teach, concerning women or positions in the set-apart assemblies. Yaakov James 2 and 9 says, If ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. This is the lesson learned from the life of Deborah, the prophetess and judge of Israel, a woman Yahweh chose the lead, the lead to his, for his people to victory. Again, that is why we have to balance balanced scriptures compare them line them up with one another because if you think not you but in general even me you know we can be very if we aren't careful we can become very one-sided with scriptures and that can be a dangerous thing because you can teach something with those scriptures and it can be turned into a Doctrine that Yahweh is calling evil and you are calling it good. You are calling it righteous. You are, you know, when you are adding his word, that's coming from your own human intellect. And you may think that is um, pleasing him, but that's actually an insult. That's why um, Aaron's, Aaron's sons had got um, Yahweh in their life. They meant well in their doing in the um in the book of what is it, Exodus? I I forgot, but uh they they have in the um a bio. But let's move on. Because I want to move on to the, the next woman. I, I told you these were gonna be lengthy. Um but we're almost we're wrapping up Deborah. In conclusion to Deborah. So we can move on to the last woman, the powers that be. Colossians verse 1, chapter 16 states, For by him were all things created, that are in the heavens and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were made by him and for him. Nothing in the heavens or that is on earth was created without Yahshua HaMashiach. For by him and for him were all things created. Yahweh has a purpose for every throne, the main principality and power. Therefore, nothing could exist unless he allows it or has created it. Even if any throne, dominion, principality, or power operates outside the jurisdictions of the scripture, it is not up to any of his creation, Yahweh's creation, to condemn or deny its existence. He is the only rightful judge. The set-apart spirit, Yahruah Kodesh, will do the work of Yahshua, or 
Yakanon John 8, 16, verse 8 states, He will reprove the world of toilessness. Your version may say sin. Sin is toilessness. And of righteousness and of judgment. Therefore, it is very important not to discredit any ministry that Yahweh alone has called for, but only teach and minister the good news, the Bezorah. Throw away, humbly speaking, throw away the word gospel. Gospel stems from pagan Anglo-Saxon origin, meaning God spells. Yahweh is not in the business of ma magic witchcraft, like pharaohs, magicians, and things of that nature. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. You know, Yahweh knew about that type of stuff. Again, it is important not to discredit any ministry that Yahweh has called forth, teaching the good news, and it has been revealed unto you by the Spirit of Yahweh. In doing so, the truth will prevail, and the word will convict. Yahweh can use anything that pleases him to promote the Bezorah, the good news, to deliver people from bondage. However, it is up to the entity individual or ministry to know if he or she is following Yahweh's order. Therefore, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for he that is not against us in our part side. Philippians 2 and 12 and Mark 9 and 40. Isaiah, Yeshia, Yeshia 50. Shia 1 to 18, come now and let us reason together. Hallelujah. I thank my sister and spirit for blessing me with that biography about the boy Deborah the judge. Now let's talk about a woman in the Bariyadisha. Let's bring her up. Let's bring one of them up. We talked about women in the Torah, in the prophetical books. We talked about women in the hidden books. Now let's talk about a woman in the Bari Hadashah, the renewed covenant. She's found in Romans 16. Romans 16. Now, Romans 16, verses 1 through 16, states a substantial amount of female figures, but we're only going to read, we're only going to elaborate on one of them, which is in verse 1, which says, And I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the assembly in Sincrea, Okay. So, again, most of the names in this chapter are members of the Roman assemblies that Shaul was sending greetings to. Um, as you read, just read in verse 1, she lived in Kenkri. She's not a member of these Roman assemblies. Um, this was a port town near the city of Corinth, Book of Corinthians. Corinth was where Shaul was staying when he wrote the letters to the Romans. So, um, in the Roman Empire, there was no postal service available for everyone to use. So, if you wanted to send a letter, you had to find someone to deliver it for you. Shaul, Paul, regularly dispatched his co-workers for his, this very purpose to deliver his letters and to serve as representatives and the letters first interpreters 
for the communities that received them, okay? In the case of the letter of the Romans, it was Phoebe who was sent to Rome with Shaul's letter. She not only traveled from Corinth and Greece to the city of Rome, but she also presented Shaul and his good news message to the Roman Gentiles. Phoebe had to read it aloud. And it's no marvel that there were going to be questions after she read it. So she was the go-to person that could answer their questions about the word of Yahweh and explain what Shaul meant due to her first-hand knowledge of his message and her experience of serving the good news alongside him as a co-worker. She was the first interpreter of Shaul's letter to the Romans. This series, this three-part series, is just... The objective is to balance Yahweh's scriptures. You know, as my main scripture that I focus on was Second Peter 3, 15 and 18, and how people can... Kepha said it, I don't even have to say it, that people twisted Shaul's scriptures, whether they meant to or not, and didn't balance his scriptures with other scriptures. So when you read stuff like women should be silent or women should only be teaching women and children, you read things such as Romans 16, you read about uh, Huda, you read about Yahuda, if you read about Rahab, you, you read about these women, you can't ignore that. If you profess to be a child of Yahweh. Shaul was talking to a specific people. Unlearned women and men. Y'all be quiet. You all you in your religion. You be quiet. And learn. And best believe the women of, of Torah, you know, they they weren't raising their hand in the sense that they they were they had the intention to be a leader, to have a, a um, undertone to it. Like I'm gonna be a leader, and I'm yeah yeah I'm gonna be a leader, and I'm gonna be the next Beyonce who run the world, girls. It's like no, it wasn't like that. You know, Jezebel was a false prophet. Um, you know, from Torah scholarship, from a Torah scholarship insight, she was very beautiful. She was very pretty. So she used her looks. And we may know that because it says that she used makeup as a weapon. Um, I believe in moderation and modesty when it comes to that type of stuff. Um... Truthfully told, I stopped wearing it because I used to wear it for Jezebel purposes <laughs> without saying too much. Like, I, so, um, if I, I, I'm just saying, if, you know, if I was to ever do that again, I would have to really think carefully if I even wanted to touch that type of stuff again um we all had our backslide our our temptations in the world so um Yahweh is fair and allows us to be um, moderate with, with certain things but what is the intention with it um so let's Let's keep, let's move on about Phoebe, Romans 16, hallelujah. So Shaul, who is the most, one of the most beloved figures in the Christian community, he called this woman his sister. In his view, she was connected 
deeply to the community that she always traveled towards. She was a part of the family of the faith system of Israel, and thus they were grafted in spiritually by hearing these good news of Yah, you know, if they wanted to receive it. Um, this was one of the ways that Shaul created and strengthened the bonds of community and identity and set apart assemblies. They were to think of one another as family, as Yisrael, Yahweh says, Yahweh is one alone. Twelve tribes are one. Um, I just read an article about how Yaakov, when he placed all those rocks together, um, he didn't just place... That's not necessarily, never mind. That's another topic. Um, again, when Shaul called, uses in verse one, um, describes Phoebe in this one verse, he doesn't say my sister, he says our sister. So Shaul respected these um Gentiles, these people in the other nations who wanted to know the good news of Yahshua, not Christianity, and I say this with humility. Check out the um, pagan link in the description box. He expected those who wanted to be a part of the set apart assembly to treat Phoebe like their sister, even though they never met her. They were to recognize this woman as her their sister, thus ensuring she will be provided for in a city new to her. One of the descriptions, attributes of Phoebe in verse 1 is a deacon. I'm not sure how, what word that might be in Hebrew, um, as I'm not too fond of using Tower of Babel languages for set-apart leaders. Um... A lot of scriptures in the Berea Hadashah and the Renewed Covenant is Greek. So I'm just going to call her a Shaliach, an apostle, which is an English an apostle. The next word that Shaul describes Phoebe is a Shaliach, but it may say deacon or deaconess. This can be rendered as a minister, a teacher. Again, Yahweh gives us all spiritual gifts. Well, the children of Israel spiritual gifts. This word refers to someone who performs some kind of service for another person. It is clear that Phoebe was exercising some kind of leadership within the set apart assembly community at this place century century elsewhere Shaul applies this word to himself and to others who engage in the teaching ministry of the set apart assemblies I'm not going to go over these scriptures you can note these if you like first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 second Corinthians 6 and 4 2 Corinthians 11, 23, and Philippians 1, verse 1, for other examples. So the second thing we learn about Phoebe is that she was a leader in the set-apart assemblies at Centre. She labored within their community and beside Shaul in the work of the good news. Um, Phoebe is also described by Shaul as a um, patron. Uh, a patron, excuse me. This can be translated as a benefactor, guardian, protector, sponsor, supporter, and defender. This most likely means that Phoebe was a woman of means and used her wealth to support the Israelite set apart movement and assist the Shaul in his work. Although most women in the ancient world depended on male relatives for support, there were in fact some women who had resources of their own. 
which they could have acquired through engaging in business or through inheritance. Women of means were crucial to the ministry of the set-apart assemblies. We know of several women who provided spaces in their homes for Israelite um, set-apart gatherings, supported the mission of the set-apart assemblies, and provided leadership within their communities. This is the only time Shaul ever used the word in any of his letters. This feminine form of the word is used only here in Romans 16 and 1, and Shaul never used the masculine equivalent. Typically, let me throw that out there too. Shaul had translators to write for him in other languages because Shaul knew the importance in the... the just the beauty of Yahweh's Torah for Hebrew. So he had not only deliverers, male men, male women, to deliver his messages, those who can speak those languages, but he had scribes, writers to write in different languages. So they probably wrote it in Greek and other languages. Yahweh's I bet is that's that's a beautiful thing to learn. Hallelujah. I humbly advise you all to look at past videos where I had announced um a playlist for foundational teachings of um an unleavened Mashiana believer. And Yahweh's Torah for Hebrew is definitely one of them. Learn his alabet. You can find that playlist in um, Learning Foundations video and Face Your Accusers, Sin No More in that playlist, okay? Let's move on. Shaul did not want to portray some set apart believers those other nations as quote unquote above others Shaul did not want to portray some believers as always beholden to or indebted to other believers as he usually opted instead to portray all believers on a level playing field with each other in relation to Yahshua as we are in one body People like Jezebel probably was boasting that she was a head on show. I mean, she was bossing her husband around. She wore the pants. <laughs> Phoebe must have provided extraordinary support and leadership to warrant Shaul's description to many and to himself as well. So the final thing we learn about this last woman figure, y'all, is that she was wealthy and that she used her wealth to serve others and to support, lead, and further the mission of the set-apart assembly. So she was uh, a remarkable person, a generous woman, and a skilled leader in her community. She was also courageous to take on the role of traveling to Rome as Shaul's emissary. Shaul's word about her and other women in Romans 16, chapter 1, verse 16, for instance. This reveals to us that women were playing crucial roles in the ministry of the set-apart assemblies throughout the nations. Phoebe is one of quite a few women that Shaul mentions and commends for their leadership and service. When Shaul writes about these women, nothing distinguishes their service from that of the men they worked alongside. They are all co-workers in the good news. And I leave off to say, my brother, my sister, we are all co-workers in the good news. Scripture says that Embrace your gift. If your gift is to give, give. If your gift is to teach, then teach. If your gift is to prophesy, prophesy. Balance Yahweh's scriptures. 
don't cherry pick one scripture and leave it as that because you'll start teaching doctrines that make it that make it um distasteful for those that may be interested in Yahweh's scriptures. You'll be viewed it as a religious Pharisee and a Sadducee, and that's not who you want to refer to as. So I thank you all for tuning in to part three of Anatomy versus Yahweh's spirituality, woman figures, and Yahweh's um, scriptures. Um, if you like to uh, give financially, please do so at my PayPal, Talk with Hebrew, T O R A H F U L H E B R E W. Zell, Yahweh's Talk with Hebrew. It's the same spelling as this page. Yahweh's Talk with Hebrew at gmail.com. And my cash app is dollar sign soul, S O U L, food, F O O D I S. Soul food is. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be back on Yahweh's Talk with Hebrew to share Yahweh's insight and revelation. Take care for now.